City Field in New York. The New York Mets play the Miami Marlins. Tuesday night baseball is courtesy of Fios by Verizon. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Fios, the best way to watch your Mets all season long at the 100% fiber optic network. Visit getfios.com. By City Preferred Card of the New York Mets. By the bullpen jackpot sweepstakes from the New York Lottery. Go to SNY.tv slash New York Lottery to enter. And by USAA Insurance, Banking, and Investments tailored for the military community. Well, it's been 17 years since that tragic day, September 11, 2001. And in order that no one ever forget that day, the Mets and their opponents tonight continue to wear the caps of the first responders to honor them and all the rest of the heroes of that tragic day. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling with you. Keith Hernandez joins us in just a moment. Ceremony's just concluding here at City Field, commemorating the losses and the heroes of 9-11. We'll have much more on that as the evening progresses. The Mets open a four-game series against the Miami Marlins, and Jacob deGrom is on the mound two days after he was originally scheduled to start as he continues to try to burnish his Cy Young credentials. Well, he gets a full week's rest from his last start in Los Angeles. When you think of this race, I think it's one of the best races I've ever seen for the Cy Young with Aaron Nola of Philadelphia. Max Scherzer having amazing seasons. But I don't think I have bias. Maybe I do. But I think Jacob deGrom is having an historic historical season this year you combine his run preventions run prevention his excellence the inability of the Mets to score or to catch the ball on some points it's just been so magical and we'll see how him not pitching Sunday not pitching Monday affects him pitching on Tuesday as DeGrom takes the mound against the Marlins tonight on 9 11 always a special night at City Field. once rose Daniel Nigro was one of the firefighters on the scene at ground zero on that horrible day he is now the FDNY commissioner and he spoke moments ago with Steve Gelbs. 
Thanks so much. Uh, Commissioner Nigro, for you, having been at Ground Zero, having lost so many friends and colleagues, what does the anniversary of 9-11 mean to you? Um, it's certainly the, the most awful day of the year for the members of New York City Fire Department, especially for us who were there that day and uh, saw the loss of so many of our dear friends. But the department rebuilt. We're bigger and better than ever and stronger than ever. And we're accepting the oath that we take to protect the uh, life and property of everyone in New York City. So it's a very difficult day, but we get through it. You know, you say the department rebuilt, and you, uh, right at the front end, were thrust into this leadership role after your good friend and, and the chief of the department, Peter Gancy, was killed on that day. What was the greatest challenge looking back on, again, getting thrust into that role and having to move forward with the relief efforts and try and start to rebuild a department? Certainly with the loss that the department suffered of um, Pete Gancy and Bill Feehan and, and, and all the rest of our chiefs, one would question our ability to rebuild. But the department has so many strong members and such an ability to uh, bring in new membership that we were able to rebuild better and stronger than ever based on what those members built for us to build on. How much interaction, especially on the anniversary do you still have with the loved ones of those who were lost? Well, we just left the families, uh, you know, from headquarters. Um, it's always a sad day. 17 years, one would think, some people think, oh, it's going to dull the senses and uh, people would not feel it the same way we do. 17 years is not anything to us and uh, families still feel that great loss and the department feels it with them but we uh, were better and stronger than ever. Lastly, we see all these images of Mets players and personnel going to the firehouses each year. What is the importance of visits like that, both from the Mets players' perspective to the, the firefighters as well as in return? I think right from that first game when Mike Piazza hit that home run, uh, it, it was showed the resiliency of New York and um, the, the feeling between the fire department and the Mets organization of brotherhood has never been stronger because it's continued from day one to today. And the feeling they have towards our families is so strong and so powerful. Uh, all we can say is thank you, thank you, thank you to the Mets organization for what they do for us. Well, Commissioner, we say that back to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the time and for all that you do. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. The Mets were on that scene that first horrible day, and the Mets organization has maintained incredibly close ties to those who suffered and those who performed heroic tasks on 9 11 and beyond. Baseball tonight at City Field. Mets and Marlins coming up.
hundreds of New York City police officers, firefighters, Port Authority police, sanitation department employees, and Office of Emergency Management all here to commemorate the 17th anniversary of the horrific events of September 11, 2001. Baseball was always very tied in with the recovery from 9-11, starting with that first game 10 days after the event at Shea Stadium. And I think that the Mets will always retain those ties. And, you know, it was a national tragedy, but more importantly for New Yorkers, it was a local catastrophe. Now Jacob deGrom goes back to work. Two days later than expected, Rafael Ortega leads off for the Miami Marlins, and his first pitch of the night is taken inside for ball one. And we're underway. Toyota numbers for Jacob DeGrom this season. You folks at home who are watching this broadcast know him by heart. And he finds the outside corner to Ortega, one and one. Ortega had a nice series against the Mets when he first joined the Marlins down in Miami. This is his 25th start. And some previous big league time in Colorado and Anaheim, and DeGrom leans him back, which he's been doing more of lately, two and one. Gives them a little speed at the top, Gare. And I think the uh, new management wants to get speed at the top for this ball club, the traditional one two kind of setup hitters. There's the starting lineup for the Marlins. JT Realmuto having a terrific year. Brian Anderson has had a really nice rookie season. Lewis Brinson back in the big leagues after sitting out with a hip injury. He had struggled, but he's been good since he's come back. As the Marlins, who were a pretty credible team for the first three, three and a half months, have really struggled lately. As uh, Pluecki, who's been taking more than his share of shots lately, took another one right off the mask. Got hit by pitches in the last week in the ribs and in the forearm and. Now he takes a direct hit on a foul ball. And I, I'm guessing this is the concussion protocol that they'll go through to make sure that Kevin's all right. See at the bottom of his mask, he's got some springs there. And we'll take a look at the Lexus Metsy. Starting infield Dominic Smith at first base. Everybody else has been kind of in there every day. Pawecki, of course, behind the plate. Out in the outfield, Austin Jackson in center field. And as Gary mentioned to me earlier before this game, I think that Mickey Callaway has gone for more of defense for his ace, Jacob DeGrom. 2 2, and Ortega takes outside, full count. Starling Castro on deck, then JT Real Muto. Rom pitching on a full week's rest since he last faced the Dodgers last Monday. Give up a home run to Justin Turner and nothing else. And he walks the leadoff hitter here in an unusual circumstance. And Ortega is on with a leadoff walk. The Marlins have been something of kryptonite for DeGrom. He has a four and five lifetime record in 15 starts, ERA over three and a half. And in fact, the Marlins are the only team all season to score more than three runs in any game. He gave up four runs in six innings against them in a game in Miami back in April. Since then he's gone 25 consecutive starts allowing three runs or fewer tying a major league record. Here's Starling Castro hitting 288 for the year. And he swings through a first pitch fastball nothing and one. By the way it's only the second time this season that DeGrom has walked the first batter of a game. In his 29th start. Long hold, and Castro fouls it back. And, you know, there are some natural concerns for DeGrom tonight, and Mickey Callaway even voiced some of those, talking about how when you're a starting pitcher, you wake up the day you're supposed to start, there's a certain adrenaline rush. And when you don't pitch, as was the case both Sunday and Monday for DeGrom, you wonder how on that third day, with that third adrenaline rush, he's going to respond. Mm. And he gets Castro looking for the first down of the night. Well, I'll tell you what. 
all fastballs right after him. He's coming out throwing hard. He's strong, Ron. Yeah, you know, in the long run, it might set him up very nicely for his last four starts. But in the short run, it might mess a little bit with his command. He walked his first hitter, but his command was impeccable there to Castro. So one out and one on that JT Real Muto is having the best offensive season of his career 20 home runs 856 OPS 27 years old certainly the best player that the Marlins have. Well I tell you what is 70 RBI and he missed some of the season early for a team that's last in runs which means you know you're not getting a lot of men on base. And a not a lot of opportunities to drive in runs and I think he's just having a terrific year 20 home runs too. And he's more of a line drive hitter in that big ballpark quite a season. Ortega at first with one out. And DeGrom pops the outside corner with a fastball one and one. A rather lengthy lead in the ERA department over his Cy Young competitors, Nola and Scherzer. He's second in the league in strikeouts behind Scherzer, third in the league in innings pitch behind those two. And a foul tip for a strike, one of two. But to me, the the clincher for DeGrom so far has been the fact that he has pitched. With the game on the line virtually every step of the way. 574 plate appearances coming into the night with the game within one run, by far the most of the majors. One two coming. Mm. And it's on the outside corner. Got a look 899 to get Real Muto for his second consecutive strikeout. Two down. Keith up and in. Down and away. Uh, Works since the beginning of time. He's pitched the Real Muto right on top of the plate, by the way. He nailed the corner and knee high. We're seeing DeGrom early, and we're only three batters in, going downstairs a lot, Ron. Yeah. And uh, bringing it. Of course, that's how he began his career as a guy who worked the bottom of the strike zone. Here's Brian Anderson. Call a rookie who has played as much as Brian Anderson has. This is the Marlins 143rd game. He has started 139 of the 143. That's what happens when you trade uh, three of your best players is that when you get a guy as talented as Anderson, you got to put him out there. And he's had to move. Started the year playing third base. They moved to right field out of necessity. And then a month ago, they moved him back to third base. And Martin Prado's year finally came to an end. I think he did a nice job in right field. I like him at third base, though. He made some mistakes on his throws, but he's got a great throwing arm. One and one to Anderson with Ortega at first and two out. Mm -hmm. And the slider on the corner, and it's one and two. Boy, he is he is picking at the corners. We thought command might be an issue. He is just darting that outside corner. It's almost like he walked Ortega and said, "Okay, I'm going to focus in." One, two, struck him out. After a leadoff walk, Degrom fans three in a row, and that's how this one begins. Two days later, he was ready to go. That's come to bat, no score.
McNeil's been hot. Michael Conforto's been hot. That's have got some bats going. 26 and 22 since the All Star break, and now trying to get their ace a win tonight as they face the Marlins ace, Jose Urania. And Rosario takes a first pitch fastball for a strike. Urania, their opening day starter. If you look at his Land Rover numbers, better since he was ejected for hitting Ronald Acuna Jr. His last start against the Phillies, seven innings and just a run allowed and a win. Three starts since that first pitch ejection. He's got 2 and 0, 2.45, probably as good a stretch as he's had all year. Mets have seen Urania at his best and at his worst. He throws a slider and gets a strike on Rosario, 1 and 2. Well, as he said, he's a guy that likes to pitch inside. He's hit 11 batters this year. And he takes here at Rosario with a 96 mile an hour fastball for the first down. Wow. How do, you, how do you do? Threw that one right by him. Nothing better. Heading to count that inside fastball and running in. By the way, they, uh, they did some research on Arrhenia when he hit Acuna. There have been several other pitchers who've hit the first batter of the game and been ejected, but he's the first pitcher in Major League history to hit a batter with the first pitch of the game and be ejected. Really? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Jeff McNeil takes the strike. So he's in a class all by himself. Drew a six game suspension, but has come back strong since. Thought that would have happened before, you know, from something the night before. Right. And again, first batters have been hit, yeah. but never first pitch. So you need to, you need to uh, fake pump him with the first pitch and then hit him with the second. I'll get him leaning over the plate. <laughs> <laughs> McNeil's been on base 22 straight starts. He has back to back three hit games the last two. And he flies this one out to left center. Over in the gap comes Brinson, who's got great range. And he runs it down for the second out. And the Jeep Marlins starting infield. We're talking about the rookie Brian Anderson started the season out in right field. 89 starts in right. This is his uh, 50th start at third base, his natural position, his best position. Lewis Brinson out in center field. He really struggled this year, but he can go get him, as you just saw right there, as he ran down that fly ball in left center field. Now Michael Conforto with two out. Michael's homered in each of his last two games. In fact, he's hit nine home runs in his last 28 games. Only two players in the majors have more in that span. 20 games left in the season. Michael with 63 RBIs. Has a chance to drive in 70, 75 runs. That would be a nice little comeback for him. But the 233 average really has got to be. At Eating at him a little bit. He's a better hitter than 230. Rainier threw him a 2 0 changeup and got a swing and miss. Rainier 5 and 12 on the year, 4.41 ERA early on in the season was victim of terrible run support. This one's hit out to left and back goes Dean onto the warning track to run it down. And that retires the side. So Rainier gets the Mets on 1 2 3. Rainier off to a good start.
second inning Jacob DeGrom faces Derek Dietrich to lead off for Miami. And goes upstairs with a fastball for ball one. Dietrich at 266 for the year 16 home runs has played a lot of left field this year. Playing first base these days since Justin Bohr was traded to the Phillies. He's moving around in that box isn't he. Tell you what, Dietrich is a decent player. I mean, he's a good player. He's not great defensively, but uh, he's someone that'd be good to have on your bench. A good ball club. He's a veteran. He's very. He is dangerous up there. Lifetime numbers for Dietrich. Now 29 years old. And a fastball for a strike. Two and two. Dietrich then Lewis Brinson and Miguel Rojas for the Marlins in the second. Miami the lowest scoring team in the National League. And Dietrich got a piece of that fastball. Well it was all fastballs that he got his K's on. One that he painted inside the Castro. One that he painted outside to Rio Muto. And one that he elevated to Brian Anderson. In that inning he threw seven fastballs inside the hitters in that first. That just missed the outside edge. Full count to Dietrich. 233 strikeouts, including the three tonight, put him second behind Max Scherzer. 11 strikeouts per nine innings, put him third in the National League. And Dietrich pops one up. Lowecki waiting for it. Oh. And uses two hands to make sure for the first out. There a little wind here. I don't feel like there's a lot of wind here. It's pretty still. So one out and nobody on in the second. And now Lewis Brinson, who just was having a dreadful time playing almost every day the first three months of the season, came back from a hip injury on the first of September, and he's been tearing it up ever oh. since. And the ground busts him up and in for strike one. 11 for 26. He's hitting 423 since his return. Stuck with him a long time, didn't they, through his struggles? Well, they could afford to, yep. I guess. Knowing they weren't going anywhere. Oh, boy. He's looked overmatched on these first two pitches. Everything upstairs and just keep it there. Don't even waste any time. Brinson was the main payback from Milwaukee when Brewers acquired Christian Yelich, who was an MVP candidate this year for the Brewers. And Brinson makes contact with that fastball and fouls it off. Who had Yelich having the better year of the three outfielders, Ozuna and Stanton? He's been fantastic, especially lately. Oh. And the Brewers are putting the heat on the Cubs, just a game behind now in the National League Central. Again, the 0-2, and Brinson lifts this one foul, and that'll go out of play. Oh. Well, those are the overall numbers and Yelich having a marvelous year Stanton has certainly got back to where he's supposed to be after a difficult start and Ozuna certainly had a better second half as well. Yeah he turned it around all Yelich needed was a little better hitter friendly park that's what he needed. Brinson strikes out on the slider and DeGrom has the second out of the inning his fourth strikeout. Well, so many fastballs upstairs, Keith, and then you yep. throw that pitch that looks like a mile away from you. I was, a hitter. I was waiting for him to throw that because he had just pounded him with the what after the fourth fastball. He did throw a fifth, and then he just threw that pitch, and it was uh, see you later. So two out and nobody on now. Miguel Rojas, the shortstop, fouls one away. Customize your experience to catch every moment this season. Get New York Mets home screen icons and features such as the MLB.tv Game of the Day, pitch tracking, in game highlights, live radio broadcasts, stats, news, and more. Download MLB at bat today. Rojas hitting 253, 10 home runs this year. And he takes low and away one and one. Rojas 
Roberts hit just one home run last year, but he hit for a much higher average and on base percentage. This year's home run production is up and his on base percentage is down. 361 on base last year, 300 this year. That's the price of the nine extra home runs. Fouls one away, and it's two and two. Austin Dean, the rookie left fielder, is on deck. Ramos struck out four tonight. He fanned only six in his last start against the Dodgers after six straight starts in which he struck out nine or more. 2 2 coming. Just off the corner, full count. It's one of those you got mad at yourself as a pitcher because you knew if he just made the pitch, he was going to take it. Just had them make it on the corner. Already his third full count of the night. Facing Rojas with two out and nobody on. Toward the middle of the diamond, Rosario flashes over the spinorama and he got him. Side retired. Beautiful play. Ahmed Rosario going sharply to his left and getting Rojas to end the inning. Great range in that direction. His defense continues to prosper. Still no score. Todd Frazier leads off the home second and takes a breaking ball for a strike from Jose Ureña. Frazier 24 RBIs in his last 29 games. Marlins put the full shift on and Todd takes a fastball for a strike and it's 0 2. Frazier Nimmo and Smith for the Mets in the second. So the game the Mets played Sunday when DeGrom was supposed to pitch but didn't they scored six runs. Of course they did. <laughs> Question is, how will they fare tonight with the Grom actually pitching? <laughs> I was watching you guys in Washington. It was a rain delay down there, and watching it on the big board, and I was kind of laughing to myself as the Mets were pushing run after run across the board. Well, we, um, we we talked about it at the outset of Sunday's game. Um, the game started in the rain. Played straight through in the rain, and Keith and I were talking about the fact that the Mets decided to scratch Degrom and push him to last night. Frazier drives one to center field, but Brinson has room, and that's the first out. And I'm sure the Mets knew the forecast for last night was miserable, and there was every chance he could get rained out. And so the upshot is, 
with DeGrom having not pitched Sunday and having been rained out last night. Now instead of having five starts left including tonight he has only four. Well what's interesting or ironic maybe is that you try, kept him out of his start on Sunday because you didn't want it to get rained out like in the first two three innings and then he loses a start anyways because two days later he's pitching right he's only going to start four times now instead of five. That's what made the whole decision to scratch yeah. him on Sunday curious. Because for one thing once the game started in the rain Sunday there was every chance they were going to play straight through right but you start in the rain you're going to play in the rain. So you know unless they were concerned about injury it didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense especially given the forecast for last night as they knew it on Sunday morning. There's pitchers that I would worry about in a kind of game that's played in the rain. The Grom's not one of them. Nemo swings through the fastball from Arrhenia and it's two and two. Nemo has been swinging a hot bat since coming back from the disabled list. 11 games hitting 353. This is on base percentage up to 396. That's fourth in the National League. And Arrhenia finds the inside corner strike three call. Good movement on that fastball. Second strikeout for Arrhenia. He's retired the first five. Starts out on the inside corner, a little bit off the plate, and then move out over the inner half. Locked up Brandon. Dan Bellino, the home plate umpire, has got a nice little zone if you're a pitcher. So you mean a nice big zone? Yes. <laughs> Here's Dom Smith. Starting for the third time in the last four games, and he came off the bench on Sunday with a pinch hit double. I have to believe that Dom is in the lineup tonight as much for his defense as anything else. I think you're right, Gary, and you want, you got uh, Austin Jackson in center field as well. So the Mets are maxing out on their defense. Good change up the first one he's thrown all day. Very nice. Might double up on that on that pitch especially with the way the shift is now. You want Dom to pull something on the ground. Here, here it comes. And he pulls it into right field and that's down for the first base out of the game. So a two out single for Dominic Smith the Mets first base runner of the night. Fooled him once but not twice and it's an off speed pitch and the difference here is. You see it's off the end of the bat he's out in front if you get that ball down and away on the corner. Then it's a. It's a swing and a miss or an easy rollover if you miss over the middle enough that's outer half. Yeah. There's your difference the ball was down. And the hitters able to get bat on it. Now Austin Jackson just three hits in his last 24 at bats. And for the second straight hitter, Rainia falls behind 2 and 0. Oh. Jackson hits it up the middle and behind the bag is Rojas to make the play to retire the side. A hit and one left after two. No score.
9-11, a survivor tree planted just outside City Field in honor of the great Rusty Staub, who did such fantastic work, not only after 9-11, but even before, but his, his charitable works post 9-11 just expanded exponentially in the aid that he and his foundation provided to the widows and orphans of police and firefighters. Hit past the mound and McNeil behind the back to field it. Throws out Austin Dean for the first out of the third. Uh, that's the time as a pitcher you're laughing because you're like, as soon as it went over your head, you're like, ah, oh, a base hit. But it's not because McNeil's playing up the middle. And Gary, just a little caveat to what you said there. And I spoke with Rusty uh, many times. Uh, after not, when 9 11 hit, Rusty said that they were overwhelmed. Sure. And uh, he was just, re it was remarkable that everybody uh, stepped up. Hey. Well, I remember Rusty, the first time he ever had the picnic in the picnic area at Shea Stadium was my first full year in 1984. And all the players went out there and it was all the uh, widows and, and children. And it was, it was impactful from that first day um, to it's still ongoing work. Well, Rusty was an extraordinary man and um, such a giving human being. Arania bunts the third strike foul. Interesting move there. Five strikeouts for DeGrom. Well, and I think it's important to, to note, you know, as we commemorate all the folks who lost their lives on 9-11 that there are still victims being counted with sure. all the, the diseases that were contracted by sure. the folks who worked on the pile at Ground Zero. Thousands now have, have been added to, to those roles and Rusty's foundation continues to do incredible work with them. Big orange. <laughs> Rafael Ortega for the second time. He walked leading off the game. Rob comes down and in with the slider. Nothing in two. Well, when you're big swing from Ortega, when you're facing a quality pitcher with power stuff, you can't be over swinging. 0 2 to Ortega. And he got him looking. Side retired. Six strikeouts in the first three innings for Jacob DeGrom. After that leadoff walk, he's retired nine in a row. Still no score. Jacob DeGrom's retired nine in a row. That's a match, just one base runner in the first two innings against Jose Ureña. Kevin Plowecki, Jacob DeGrom, and Ahmed Rosario up for the Mets in the home third. And Plowecki 
takes one on the outside corner nothing and one. Both these pitchers are working the corners and both of them are getting a lot of called strikes from Dan Bellino the home plate umpire. Mets have done well against Urania this year. He's 0-2 with an ERA over six, but for his career he has had some gems against the Mets. Including a six scoreless inning one hit affair a couple of years ago. Yeah, he's pitched well in this uh, in City Field also. And only two starts here, ERA under one. DeGrom on deck. He's been red hot with the bat lately. Two and two to Polacki. He's averaged about two and a half walks per nine innings. He is not a strikeout pitcher. He's never had more than seven strikeouts in a big league game. Which is amazing for a guy in this day and age. He throws hard, but he's a sinker slider guy, so he doesn't really pitch up in the strike zone. Which is where you get a lot of strikeouts these days. He's got two strikeouts so far tonight. Now he's issued his first walk. And the Mets have a leadoff base runner in the third. Well, it's time for another edition of the minor league name game. Tonight we feature the Columbia Fireflies, coming from the species of firefly Photurus frontalis. Can you take it from there? Very Mark? nice. <laughs> In spring, the Photurus frontalis perform a light show in which hundreds of fireflies yep. synchronize their flashing. Oh. You should know that in Columbia baseball history, they have had the following names for their team okay. the Senators, the Skyscrapers, the Gamecocks, the Comers, the Sandlappers, the Reds, the Gems, the Bombers, the Mets, and finally the Fireflies. I think they, they hit on a good one. Everybody loves Fireflies. I, in St. Louis, where I lived, I was had to drive through a little valley, and you would come down above and go down into the valley. And after a game at night in the summer, the whole valley would be like a blanket of fireflies. Wow. It's beautiful. Jacob McGraw being asked to bunt here. Jake has back to back games with two hits and an RBI. Last time a Met pitcher had back to back games with two hits and an RBI, Rick Aguilera, oh. 1987. He could hit Aggie. Jake has three sacks to go with his 10 hits this year, and he bunts one foul, and it's one of two. Speaking of fireflies, here's a promo for fireworks. Get to City Field Saturday night, September 29th, when the Mets play the Marlins at 7:10 for Fan Appreciation Weekend. After the game, a fireworks show will light up the City Field sky, presented by Verizon. For tickets, visit Mets.com/tickets. Nice segue, Gary. Will there be fireflies on fireworks night? One two and he swings and it's one down the left field line foul. Let me ask you this from a, an animal rights perspective. Is it OK to put fireflies in a jar. I would not put the fireflies. I, in a jar. A, I mean kid, kids love taking you know catching fireflies and putting them in a really? jar and watching them light up. When we were kids we would do it with uh, bees. The bees. Yeah we would do it with bees and uh, poke holes in the lid. Right. They never survived. Sorry folks. Oh well then that's probably not OK. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I felt terrible about it. DeGrom foul tips it. Real Muto <laughs> hangs on to it and that's the first out I mean, of the inning. Maybe maybe a, a little bigger hole my friend. <laughs> no. I then, plenty. The bees, then the bees will get out. <laughs> uh, you, you were you were hoping they would you know create some some honey for you. I don't know what I was doing. Oh it was the whole neighborhood full of kids. Look at that old dragonfly. Very nice. It was just what we, we, we what we did it we were little tykes. Nubbed right back to Arania took his time getting it to second and Castro has no chance to double up Rosario. So they get the second out one four. On the fielder's choice, and Rosario reaches. Well, you'd like to get two here. A 
Everybody's late getting there. I don't think he was sure who he was going to throw to. So discretion better part of Valor at least get one. You saw right now they're discussing the middle infielders right there. Castro wasn't sure that Urania was going to make the play. He charged towards the ball and then no one was there. Well it's one of those DeGrom games so far and there are two out. You got to send Rosario here don't you. Yeah it's, I would try to take advantage of Urania although Real Muto has got a good arm. A pitched McNeil inside. The first at bat went right after him in got ahead of him inside. Let's see if that's the game plan here. Now how tough is it when you have a guy like McNeil who loves to swing at the first pitch when he's got a guy on first base who wants to steal. Well you have the manager put the hold on so he allows him to steal. You could do that. I think if you get a good pitch to hit go to go to hit and you hit a double and uh, Rosario is going to score. Yeah. You know and he's got a good enough eye and if it's a ball it takes. The difficulty for a left hand hitter is that you do not have enough peripheral vision to see the runner go. Right handers can see it. I think the real good thing here is if the worst case scenario happens and Rosario gets thrown out McNeil leads off in front of Conforto next inning. Not awful. Well he was not showing any indication of running on the first two pitches. Rainey has only given up four stolen bases all year four out of ten so he's held runners well fairly quick to the plate inside to McNeil and it's two and one. McNeil fly to center his first time up. Dietrich with a hard tag over there. Very interesting. Driven out to left field. Dean back a few strides and that retires the side. A leadoff walk. Rainier gets through it. DeGrom back to the mound for the fourth with no score. Package today. Choose from full season, half season, or 20 game plans that include opening day and the Subway Series. Plus, for a limited time, receive an authentic or replica Mets jersey with your purchase. Purchase your plan today at Mets.com slash ticket plans. Starling Castro leads off in the fourth inning. Took a call third strike his first time up. And DeGrom falls behind him 2 0. 
Jake's retired nine in a row after walking the first battery face and he has struck out six of the nine. Three and out of Castro. Sterling Castro, 28 years old, 1,435 hits. It's almost halfway to 3,000 at age 28. And he takes outside ball four, and DeGrom has issued his second walk. Both have come leading off innings. He's been a star from the day he arrived. Guy who was supposed to be a relief pitcher for the Mets and wound up being rookie of the year in 2014. He was slowed down by elbow problems two years ago, had the nerve transposition surgery, and since then he has been arguably the best pitcher in baseball. Interesting to hear Mickey Callaway talking about Jacob DeGrom and Corey Kluber and what they might have in common. He said, great ability to turn and forget about the last pitch. And start executing the next one. They have something else in common too. Yeah, both same. Stetson Hatters. That's right. Second time through the order here. Let's see what there's any adjustments made by the Marlin hitters, particularly this their best hitter right here, Brian Muto. It was the first changeup that we've seen all night from Degrom. That's interesting. He got through the order the first time with all fastballs and a few sliders. You know, about the last half dozen starts, not only that change up to righties, he's been able to get that change up away to righties, down and away. It's very hard to do. That's got to be one of the hardest well, things for a right hander to do, I would think. Grounded down to first. That is a fair ball. Smith gets the out, nice. and then the tag by Rosario for the double play. Nicely done by Dom Smith. Three, three, six, double play, two out, and nobody on. Defense, very defense works, Keith. Very nice by Dom right there. The ground ball is a piece of keg, nice high hop, but he got rid of the ball. Okay, it's easy right here, tag the bag. But look at his throw here. Just got rid of it quick. <laughs> Castro was not even hustling the second. Well, how about the slide? He came up ten feet short oh. of the bag. I think they're reviewing it. <laughs> Here's Brian Anderson. He hits one toward the middle of the diamond. And McNeil can't play it on the back end. And Anderson has the first Marlins hit of the night. A soft infield hit for Brian Anderson. Well, Rosario way up the, uh, for the pull, a long way to go. I don't think even if McNeil fields that cleanly they throw out Anderson. So the Marlins have a two out base runner and now Derek Dietrich who fouled out to the catcher his first time up. So Rob might have no hit stuff but he's not going to pitch a no hit. I, I thought for a <laughs> we while were, that we, we might were, see one of those you you know what. They don't have to say you know what anymore. I don't. Is the change up foul one and one. Tonight's Verizon trivia question Who was on base for Mike Piazza's historic uh -huh. run in that game on September 21st, 2001? I know this. Carse walked him. Steve Carse. Steve Carse gave up the home run. Queens native, Steve Carse. Thinking for the Braves that night, Jason Marquis from Staten Island started, and Steve Carse threw the pitch to Piazza. Remember started for the Mets that night? Yes, I do. Uh, he was not from no. New York or from Panama. Panama, yes. Or his chin. Two coming to Dietrich. Too high with the fastball. Dietrich's been vulnerable to that pitch in past meetings with DeGrom, but not so far tonight. He's been able to lay off. Yeah, usually not away, but if you get it up and in, he wants to swing at it.
2 2. Bounce with the slider foul. Slider out of the strike zone is a good pitch to Dietrich in the strike zone, not. Lewis Brinson would be next. It's amazing. Every game is the same yep. for, for DeGrom. Doesn't get any runs. Every pitch is thrown under duress. Again, the 2 2. Chases the high fastball that time and fouls it off. Got to do it. Pitch of the at bat coming to Diedrich. He flares one into shallow left. That's going to fall for a base hit. Anderson pulls in at second, so Diedrich with an opposite field single, and the Marlins have two men on. No, well, you'll take it. A pitcher of this quality, you'll get it. You'll take a hit anytime you can get it. Particularly if you're not feeling good at the plate and you come in and you face a guy like the Grom, or you feel like you just get out of town just ahead of the posse if you get you dump one in like that. So two on and two on and now Lewis Brinson who was struck out his first time up. So the Marlins have a runner to second base for the first time tonight. Anderson at second Dietrich at first with two out. Position hitters this year are hitting 143 with runners in scoring position against Jacob DeGrom. 110 points under the league average. And Brinson swings at the high fastball and misses, and it's 0 2. Pitching him exactly opposite of the first at bat. All pounded him up and in, fastballs, and got him with the slider on the sixth pitch. This one leads him off with the slider, then comes up and in. The exact opposite. Let's see if he puts him away up and in. Oh, 2. Fly ball center field Jackson got a late start going back and it's over his head and off the wall. Two runs will score Brinson pulls in at second with a double and the Marlins have a two nothing lead. Well 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 that's pretty impressive by the youngster here wants it in but gets it over the middle Ronnie. There's the mistake right there allows him to get the bat on it. And pretty good power right here. That's off the base of the wall. Excuse me. Almost the top of the wall. Two outs here. You're on your horse. Well, DeGrom, after two out and nobody on, gives up a couple of soft hits and then a booming double to Brinson that cost him two runs. And now Rojas takes a slider for a strike. Marlins who have been very troublesome to DeGrom giving him trouble again. Top of your screen look at the little late break by Jackson but this hit the top of the wall would have been one heck of a catch even if he got a, a good jump on that ball. The ball was scalded. Two to Rojas, and he takes one the other way, slicing. Foul. Well, if you're wrong, what you shake your head about the most is that Brinson got you on 0 and 2. Yep. You know, you, you you still want to. I know you want to economize on pitches, but you still, when you got you know, in your head, if you're going up and in, you got to miss off the plate if you miss. Happens though. So. 
have no room for error. An error can be costly. That would, that would bet you that Tom Seaver and Jerry Kuzman would say, Welcome to the club. <laughs> no. Nobody has put up a one or a zero for a start more than DeGrom at this point in a career. But tonight, already two against his ledger. Able to put the cap on this fourth inning. A leadoff walk, he got the double play ball, but then Anderson with a dribbler and Dietrich with a bloop. And Brinson chased them both home with a 408 foot double. This will be his 24th pitch of the inning. Chases the slider for strike three. Gaining over seventh strikeout for DeGrom, but the Marlins strike first. Prince's two run double puts Miami up 2 0. Mets down 2 0 as they come to bat against Jose Urania in the home fourth. Michael Conforto hit one deep to left his first time up. Conforto, Frazier, and Nimmo for the Mets, and Conforto drills one down the line, and that'll go to the corner for an extra base hit. So after the Marlins put a two spot up in the top of the inning, Conforto starts the Mets on the road back with a leadoff double. Michael been swinging a very good bat lately. Ball down in the strike zone, not in enough. Michael makes them pay. 18th double of the year for Conforto to go with his 23 home runs. Mets have their second hit of the night. Now Todd Frazier, who flied out to center his first time up. And he takes the slider for a strike from Urania. You know it's interesting. I, I've seen Urania have some bad games against the Mets, some really good games against the Mets, but he always was arms and legs and all over the place. They've worked really hard with him. They've tightened up his mechanics, and his pitchers are much closer to where he's trying to throw them all the time, as opposed to before. Round 
foul on the change up one and two. You know he is a very tall a lanky athlete so there's a lot of moving parts. But you can see he takes that ball out. And straight through pretty simple motion now. Not a lot of mistakes there like it. Brandon Nimmo waiting on deck. One two to Frazier. And he pops him inside. Two and two. I mentioned earlier, Rick has been pitching some of his best baseball of the year lately. It was odd. His first 12 starts of the year, he had a 4.41 ERA. He was 0 7 because his team just didn't score for him. And the Marlins lost all 12 of those games. That's lined to short and a great catch by Rojas for the first down. Frazier figured he had a hit. Flips the bat in frustration as Rojas makes a nice play on the backhand. Nice base running, Conforto. Hanging slider hit right on the nose by Frazier. Just positioned perfectly as Rojas. The I hit a line drive and it was caught bat flip. Here's Brandon Nimmo who struck out his first time up. Anyway, so Urania first 12 starts 4.41 oh and seven. His last 15 starts 4.41 five and five. They finally scored for That's him. Right. Same ERA, completely different results. Up and into Nimmo and it's two and zero. Oh. Got a couple of good arms in this rotation. Young arms. The Mets are going to see Sandy Alcantara, Trevor Richardson. Trevor Richards, sorry. Doubleheader tomorrow with the rain out last night. The coverage begins at 3 30 tomorrow. Zach Wheeler will pitch game one, Jason Vargas game two for the Mets, and some combination of Trevor Richards okay. and Jeff Brigham. Pitch the doubleheader for the Marlins. Brigham will be making just his second big league start. Rain has walked one. He's behind on Nimmo 3 0. And there are the city problems. Again, the Marlins haven't announced who's pitching which game in the doubleheader tomorrow, but Alcantara's going to go Thursday. He is the guy with the electric arm. We are, though. Well, we've decided for them. <laughs> Here's a strike three and one. I will say this Brigham was scheduled to pitch Sunday, and he was scheduled to pitch last night. Then they bumped him to let Arrania make the start tonight, so he's kind of in the same boat that DeGrom was in. He was getting pushed back. That's on the corner, and it's three and two. Walked one, he struck out three. Two hard hit balls to start the inning by Conforto and Frazier. And now three and two to Nimmo. And Brandon grounds one on the right side. Dietrich comes in to get it. And that's the second out as Conforto goes to third. So two away. Let's answer our Verizon trivia question who was on base for Mike Piazza's home run post 9 11? Ah. Oh. Desi Relaford. Thought I was wrong. Well, they didn't have to pinch run. That's Mike took care of that. That's right. Desi Relaford, the best position player ever to take the mound for the New York Mets. <laughs> Through gas. It would have converted them in these days. Here's Dominic Smith who had a base hit his first time up. Himself with a bat. Ow! I've never seen that. 
So he must have got himself on the shin. Still ran. He, he, always, could. he always runs. I mean, some guys, after smacking themselves in the shin with the bat, might have slowed down. He tried to speed up. Now, Rainier ahead on Smith, 0 and 2. And Dom lifts one to right, and Ortega's right there, and that retires the side. So the best way to waste a leadoff double from Conforto. We go to the fifth at City Field with DeGrom and the Mets down 2 0. You see the bottom note 25 straight starts three runs or fewer. OK so you knew about King Cole in 1910 with the Cubs right. That's whose record he tied. There's another party to factor in as Austin Dean takes a strike. I've been reminded enough about King Cole. Yeah that's why I know. Ryan Stanek of the Tampa Bay Rays oh, has yeah. now made 25 straight starts all 25 starts he's made this year without giving up. More than three runs. Of course, the caveat there is that Stanek has pitched two innings or less <laughs> at all 25 of those starts, as he's been used as not a classic starter, but as an opener. On his last start, he walked the three batters he faced. But he still didn't give up more than three runs, and it was 25 straight starts. Now, just for reference, DeGrom has had one start where he only pitched. Two innings or less, right? That was the start in Philadelphia where he had that 45 pitch inning. And King Cole in two, 1910 had two starts where he pitched two innings or less. Stanek has had all 25 of his starts, two innings or less. Mm. It's all record book stuff. It's going to be interesting to see how the powers that be mm -hmm. that are in charge of stats uh, recognize and compare. A, a, a starting pitcher like DeGrom with a, a opener starting pitcher like Stanek. Right. And then how do you factor in all those relief wins that the Rays have? That's right. That are really starters wins for guys who are relieving. Grounded wide of the bag and Smith makes the flip to DeGrom to retire Austin Dean for the first down. By the way going back to the double that Brinson hit off DeGrom in the last inning. It came on an 0 2 pitch. Before that double, hitters on 0 2 pitches against DeGrom this year were 10 for 103. Hmm. It's an 0 97 average with 60 strikeouts and no extra base hits. So it's the first extra base hit he's allowed all year on an 0 2 pitch. Hey. To a, uh, one of the youngest players in the game. 
Rainey struck out his first time up. And he goes fishing for that slider and it's 0 and 2. Jake has already struck out seven tonight. And make it eight as he takes care of Arrania for the second time. Two out. Didn't try to punt that time. Maybe he should have. I mean, whatever it takes. I mean, chances of getting a hit off the Grom or even putting in a play are next to nil for a pitcher. So now he starts his third time through the batting order, Rafael Ortega, who has walked and struck out tonight. Another note about that fourth inning. It's only the third time this year that Jake has given up three hits in a row. Hmm. Three, three times in 29 starts. And everything he's done this year is so phenomenal. Yeah, that's what I was saying in the open about historic. I just, uh, you know, it, it's a whole different animal. Um, but, you know, I haven't seen a, a year like this since. Uh, Dwight in 85. It's just it's every number is off the planet. Ortega lifts one to shallow right center. And Jackson makes the call and the catch and that retires the side. Bob gets a one, two, three. We're halfway through. Two nothing Miami. Museum about how sports helped the healing process post 9 11. Some of the caps from uh, those days. And really, all sports participated in the healing process. There was hockey, the marathon, but I think front and center was the way baseball handled the return because. You know, the game was interrupted for mm -hmm. a week. Yeah. Didn't get back to New York for 10 days. See the beams representing the Twin Towers. That is just one ominous sight. Austin Jackson leading off in the home fifth. Jackson into a fielder's choice his first time up. Lower third of the order for Urania, working with a 2 nothing lead in the fifth inning. Lewecki on deck, then DeGrom. And Jackson goes down swinging on the slider. Fourth strikeout for Urania, one down in the fifth. Now Kevin Lewecki walked his first time up. Well, the 
Phillies are starting to fade from sight. Yep. They're playing a doubleheader today with the Nationals. They lost the first game three to one, and they're down three nothing in the fifth inning in the second. Braves play in San Francisco tonight, where they won the opener of that series last night. Five game lead for the Braves starting the day, so it's five and a half at the moment. Well, meanwhile, Washington has a chance to sweep a doubleheader for the second time this week. What a weekend uh, for Washington and the Cubs on Friday night, four hour rain delay, game canceled, doubleheader on Saturday that Washington sweeps, three hour, three hour rain delay on Sunday, canceled. Rojas gets in front of the grinder, handles the hop, a low throw pulled out by Diedrich for the second out. And they're going to make up that game Thursday in D.C. if they can, with the hurricane coming in. Well, this is the. Uh, these are the schedules for the Phillies and Braves. It's starting to become a boot point as the Braves pull further and further away. The better races are in the Central and in the West. Cubs lead down to a single game over Milwaukee starting the night, and those teams are playing tonight at Wrigley, so the Brewers have a chance to tie for the lead. DeGrom hits one toward the middle of the diamond, and that's through for a base hit. So DeGrom, who had two hits in each of his last two starts, has his first hit in this game. And just the third for New York. I got him eight for his last 20. Hope I'm right. Fastball up. This goes right back through the box. Ring is in no position to field. So base knock. Jake got a smile on his face before the ball even got through. He knew there was a hit coming. <laughs> so now the tying run at bat with Rosario at the plate as Ranger starts his third time through the order. It's a slider over for a strike. Rosario has struck out and hit into a fielder's choice over two. Fly ball, right center field. He's in back Ortega, and that retires the side. A hit and one left. Radia has shut the Mets out through five to Grom on the short end. House in the city yesterday it was engine company 22 on East 85th Street. And they lost nine members of their company on 9 11. And the players were there to talk to the firefighters, learn some of the history, and pass it along. You know, it struck me today, 17 years on from 9 11, that if you're a kid in high school right now, you had you have no recollection. 
That's right. Of the events of 9-11. And as the years go along and we move further and further along, it becomes that much more necessary for those who lived through it to pass it along for the generations to come. You know, I've, I've visited uh, some of those firehouses also, and I, I will tell you that uh, you get much more out of it uh, than the firefighters. You know, I mean, they're happy to see you, and that's cool, but it's a, a lesson. McNeil hurries in to get the grinder by Castro and throws him out for the first out of the sixth. It's a, it's a real lesson learned when um, when you hear about their own stories about their about their brethren and uh, what kind of people they were, what kind of family men they were, all that stuff. It's just uh, it's very sobering. And for many of them, their own experiences on 9/11 that they somehow were able to survive. Um, everybody's got a story. And, you know, there are very few people in New York who were not touched in some way, whether it's someone they knew or a friend of a friend or a family member. Or, I mean, we're talking about 3,000 people. Even in a, a huge community like this, everybody was touched in some way or another, and nobody more than the uh, the brave men of the fire department. JT Realmuto is 0 for 2 tonight, and he pops one straight up. Lewicki looking for it and grabbing it. Two out. Let's check in with the studio. Doug Williams is a game break brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. If the Dodgers don't make the postseason, yeah. the Cincinnati Reds may well be the reason. And, and Scooter Jeanette, who's hitting 750 off the Dodgers this season. 750. The Dodgers are 0 and 5 against the Reds. Mm. The Reds might not only decide the West race, they might decide the Central race as well because their next two series after the Dodgers, they play the Brewers and the Cubs. Brian Anderson had an infield hit. With two out of the fourth that innocently enough began the two run rally for it in the Marlins. He had an infield hit. Derek Dietrich dumped one at the left and Lewis Brinson hit one off the center field fence for two runs. There's the West. Colorado strafed Arizona last night 13 to 2. Trevor Story starting to burnish his MVP credentials. Three run homer in that game for the Rockets. This is 32nd ties of franchise record. Troy Tulowitzki has a shortstop. Good slider here. From the ground. One and two to Anderson. Grounded on the right side for McNeil. And DeGrom has himself another one, two, three inning. He's retired seven in a row. Middle of the six, two nothing Miami.
The three hits for the Mets over the first five innings against Jose Ureña. Got some catching up to do for Jacob DeGrom, who finds himself down by multiple runs for a rare time this year. Jeff McNeil gets ahead of a changeup and pulls it foul. Nothing and one as we start at the bottom of the sixth. McNeil has been up twice, flying out both times to center and to left. McNeil, Conforto, and Frazier, two, three, and four in the order. Third time around against Urania. Will shift on against Jeff. And he golfs one out to left center and overcomes Dean. Three at bats, three fly ball outs for McNeil. One out of the home sixth. SNY Super Slow Motion is brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. Watching Jake right there, you see the face that pitchers make right before they release the ball. That usually ends up being your baseball card. Remember one I got, my mom said, Come, you have to make those faces when you pitch. Like, <laughs> I mean, what do you want? I'm exerting me? myself. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, when, when you talk about making faces, I always go back to Michael Jordan and to a lesser extent David Wright yeah, guys yeah. would stick their tongue out <laughs> when they were performing. I don't ever remember the white seeing a pitcher do that, sticking his tongue out when he pitched. Well, I, I um, I've, I've seen pitchers not when they release the ball, but uh, stick their tongue out. But I know that. Conforto drives one out to left center. Back goes Brinson near the wall. It's out of here. Michael Conforto homers for a third straight game to get the Mets on the board. A one iron out to left center. First time in his career that Conforto have homered in three straight games. His 24th of the year, and it's now two to one. Well, this is impressive. This ball has right down the middle a ball that he could pull. And he opts to let it go deeper. And Michael's got to bottle that. He is so strong. There's not a ballpark that can hold him in any direction. Mets home run means city will donate enough for no kid hunger to provide 20,000 meals to kids in need. Three days in a row, three games in a row with a home run, and two of the three hit to left field. And so it is for Conforto, a guy whose home run chart takes you line to line. I mean, that really is a line drive that went out of the ballpark. That's how strong that young man is. Frazier lined out to short his last time, and he takes one on the corner for a strike, and he is rather perturbed with Dan Bellino. He thought both the first and second strikes were out of the zone. G pitch cast agrees with Todd. But this time so does Bellino. To it too. That would have got that would have gotten Todd thrown out. Called out. He reaches and hooks one in the air. And Rojas is there to grab it. Two out. Rojas thought it was three. On this solemn day, USAA honors those who have served and all of our service members at home and abroad. That was a little embarrassing. Rojas was running off the field thinking it was the third out after he caught that ball. It happens uh, once or twice a year to players, uh, more in September. Here's Nimmo with two out and nobody on. And Brandon tries to hold the swing and he stopped it in time. 1 0. Nimmo has taken a call third strike and grounded out 0 for 2. That's a two extra base hits tonight and Conforto has them both. Double and a home run. The other two hits, singles by Smith and DeGrom. And that's it against Urania. But it has certainly been comforting to see Conforto come around this second half of the year. Still not exactly where he wants to be, but he's sure heading in that direction. 24 home runs now, just three shy of his career high last year. He's finishing strong. 
Second straight time. Rain is falling behind 3 0 to Nimmo. So as we get deeper into this game, Mourinho, who just averages a little under six innings per start, that arm is dropping a little. That sinker is getting a little flatter. And he works his way back to a full count against Nimmo. Takes ball four and the Mets up the time run on base. Second walk given up by Reagan. And uh, Dom Smith will try and make something of it. Dom at a base hit to right field in the second, fly out in the fourth, one for two. Marlins got their two runs in the fourth and a Lewis Brinson double. The Mets getting one back here in the sixth on Conforto's home run. And now Smith takes below the knees with a changeup, ball one. Three infielders on the right side against Dom. Um, Beginning in the Marlins bullpen. Nobody throwing as yet. Behind a rain who's about to throw his 90th pitch. And Smith just got a piece of that fastball, and it's one and two. Statcast AI powered by Amazon Web Services. You see the third baseman Anderson with two strikes overlapping onto the right side. One two to Smith and Dom went around on the half swing for strike three side retired five strikeouts for Arania Mets cut the lead in half on Conforto's home run two one Marlins going to the seventh. In between innings for continuing to argue balls and strikes, Jeff McNeil, who hasn't played third base in a month and a half, is going to move to third, and Wilmer Flores comes in to play second. It's 
was Frazier after he was uh, unhappy with a couple of strike calls. Oh geez he threw him out for he's at first base because he continued to argue. see what happens for the player he goes in and sees the pitch and sees the same pitch oh. cast that we see and saw that was yeah. off the plate. He doesn't need to go look at a camera. He's, the ball was outside yeah. you know it's outside. Frazier likes to he, he, he gives umpires a, an earful. Well there were a couple of pitches that he objected to this was the second one that was clearly off the plate and was called a strike. I'm a little puzzled though about how the Mets decided to replace Frazier. You got DeGrom on the mound who's pitching for his ERA. Yeah, yeah. And you've got McNeil now playing third base who's barely played there. As opposed to putting Reinheimer in the game who's a better fielder and then you can always pinch it down the road. I guess I mean. They're trying to keep McNeil's bat in the lineup. I know he's not coming well, up for a while. But well, you take you take you put Reinheimer in Frazier's spot and leave McNeil <laughs> at second base. Okay. Then if you need to bat for Reinheimer, you can. I mean, right now the most important thing is to not have Degrom give up any runs. Dietrich, with a big cut of the fastball, and it's two and two. Dedrick flared a base into left field his last time up and scored on the Brinson double that put the Mets behind in this game. And he takes strike three wow. call. Fastball got him looking. That's nine strikeouts now for DeGrom. That's his third called strikeout. Caught looking. So DeGrom's retired eight in a row, and now Brinson. Who hit the double off the center field fence that drove in the two Marlin runs in the fourth inning? He was the last man to reach for Miami. And Ron buries a slider in the dirt for ball one, and unhappy with himself. Marlin's bullpen is busy. Kyle Barraclaw is up. Slider in for a strike, one and one. Rom is due a turn at bat in the bottom of the seventh. The way he's throwing, it looks like Urania might start the inning, though. Brinson fouls one back. Mickey Callaway may have an interesting decision on his hands. If you're still down in the game, but you think DeGrom can pitch more, do you let him bat in the bottom of the seventh? If there's two outs, I would. If there's one out, you could, uh, and a guy on, you could butt him over. First two guys get on, you could butt him over, too. One two coming. And Brinson takes a slider away. Two and two. I think if you're in the heat of a pennant race, uh, Gary, you pinch it for him. Uh, these this uh, this game right now is is meaningless. Right. I would give him a shot to get a W. Check swing and he held it. It's three and two to Brinson. It's a chance to get a W. It's a chance to get another scoreless inning. I mean, unless it's the first two runners are on base and you can bunt, or it's second and third. Well, he's having a long turn at bat here with Brinson, which is not helping his cause in that respect. He's about to throw his 100th pitch now. Remember, he's pitching with a full week's rest, right. so that should yep. factor in too. Good point, Ron. His high this year has been 116 pitches. I'd let him run with it and see if the team, if the Mets can't get him a run and get him a W. Again, the 3 2. And Brinson flies one out to right, chasing Nimmo back to the track. And a step from the wall, he makes the catch. Brinson hit it well the other way. We're seeing, uh, we're seeing some of this young man's talent, aren't we? Brinson? No. Oh. I love the reaction from DeGrom, perfectionist. This ball has right down the middle. That's what he's mad about. Brandon had it all the way. He's just such a perfectionist, and that's what it takes to be, you know, on top of your game and to be a, an elite athlete. Now we go. Rojas takes curveball for a strike. Thomas throwing very few curveballs tonight. The second one I've got him for. 
first one he uh, on the third at bat to Ortega he threw. First pitch. First also. pitch, sorry. Yep. On the corner and he gets ahead on Rojas 0 and 2. Struck out nine tonight. Slash foul. Ooh. Nice. Got into the ground jersey making a nice play. Gold glove. <laughs> he might want to get one of these days. Two to Rojas. He fouls off another one. Well, I think the pitch count of this inning is pretty much sealing the fact that this is going to be DeGrom's last inning. And that the Mets will bat for him in the bottom of the seventh. I hope not. One, two coming. Past the mound, charging Rosario, fires in time to get Rojas, side retired. Ten in a row retired by DeGrom after he gave up the two run double back in the fourth. And on this 9 11, we'll keep it here at City Field for the performance of God Bless America. First Lieutenant Jordan Laskowski, United States Marine Corps, stationed at Marine Corps Air Station New River, VMM 261, currently aboard the USS Baton. Please rise and remove your caps for the singing of God Bless America. Please welcome FDNY Firefighter Regina Wilson. God bless America, land that I know. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the ocean, white with foam. God bless her. My home, sweet home. God bless America. My home, sweet home. 
in the seventh inning. Mets down two to one. The lower third of the order. Jackson, Plawecki in the pitcher's spot coming up. We'll say Arrhenia working with a two to one lead. Jackson has hit into a fielder's choice and struck out. Jacob DeGrom may or may not be done after 106 pitches over seven innings. Hmm. And Arrhenia falls behind Jackson three and one. Anthony Swarzak just activated from the disabled list this weekend. Getting ready in the Mets bullpen. And Jackson takes ball four, and the Mets have the leadoff man on. Third walk given up by Arrhenia. Let's check in with Doug Williams in the studio for another game break, Doug. I saw a treatise the other day on the number of errors that Javi Baez has forced this year. That was another one. Cubs trying to bounce back after Milwaukee beat him last night behind Wade Miley, who has been a revelation. Well, if the Cubs can get a lead, uh, uh, Josh Hader, who struck out all six that he faced last night, probably is not in the game tonight. Jack Reinheimer out on deck to bat for DeGrom. Jay Bruce for some reason not available tonight. Maybe it's a good question. Wouldn't you think it would be the right time for him? Yes. Yeah. He's got a bat in his hands. So apparently he's being saved for some other spot. Discussing no. hitting with Pat Russler. Oh and two to Plawecki who's walked and grounded out and he gets jammed and pops one up Rojas back on the outfield grass and makes the grab. Nice play by Rojas for the first down. And Reinheimer is going back in the dugout and it will be Jay Bruce to pinch hit. That's the right call. Maybe. I got to believe that Plawecki got got on a bunt. Yeah. Yeah. So it will be Bruce looking for the one big swing that could give the Mets the lead. DeGrom done after seven. His ERA goes up from 1.68 to 1.71, giving up two runs in seven innings. 26 straight starts now. He's allowed three runs or fewer. 21 straight quality starts. That's going to be all for Arrhenia. They've got the left hander Adam Conley up in the bullpen, and they'll bring Conley in to face Bruce. So Arrhenia out after six and a third. The call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon. We'll be right back to City Field.
baseball and the New York Mets once again remember the events of September 11, 2001. 17 years on, memories have not faded. And each generation pledges not to forget. Adam Conley out of the bullpen for the Marlins. JT Riddle will play shortstop and bat ninth. Conley in to face Jay Bruce. Announces the pinch hitter and he misses inside with the fastball for ball one. I was watching Conley warm up. He didn't throw a strike <laughs> the entire warm up, but he's always been tough on the Mets. Seven starts, seven relief appearances. This is eighth relief appearance, ERA 1.68. His overall number is not quite as impressive. He's got a 4.68 ERA this year. Bruce is two for ten in his career against Conley. Jackson the tying run at first with one out. And Bruce fouls away the fastball one and one. So Jacob DeGrom has the record to himself now. 26 straight starts allowing three runs or fewer. Taking Brian Stanek out of the equation. He probably will tie him in his next start. But the king is the throne for the real starters. Jake has the record. Two and one to Bruce. Now he's hoping the Mets can get him a couple of runs and a chance for a win. Wins may not matter to the voters in the Cy Young, but they still matter to pitchers. Yes, they do. So he has reason to smile, but he'd like to smile more. I don't think Conley's the kind of pitcher who has the control to feature a 2 1 breaking ball here to Bruce. So this might be the pitch for Jay to hit. Look middle end, maybe? Yes. And he hits it hard, but right to the second baseman, Castro, for the second out. So Conley gets his man. Good base running, Austin Jackson. That's just, that's just knowing the shift was there and playing the hard pull. Good base running. And Conley will stay in to face Rosario, even though they have a right-hander up in the bullpen. And Ahmed takes a fastball for a strike. Rosario has been the Mets' best hitter against lefties this year. Top spin line drive. Watch this. Yep. That's very cool. Jackson has not done much base stealing this year. He's got three steals in six tries. Rosario was held in check by Arrania tonight. 0 for 3. Strike out, ground out, fly out. Now facing the left hander Conley. And he chases the changeup, and it's 0 2. He's got Rosario down to the count 0 and 2. Rounded to the right side. Easy play for Castro. And that retires the side. So Conley gets a couple of outs to keep the Marlins in the lead. DeGrom will not get a win tonight. 2 1 Miami going to the eighth.
the Medicare that takes a total approach to health and wellness. By Nissan, now's the best time to save big at Nissan's Take Home a Titan Truck Month event. And by Papa John's, enjoy the quality pizza you've come to expect from your local Papa John's. We go to the eighth inning. Mets down two to one. Haji is streaming the Mets, so can you watch SNY Mets games on any device with live streaming presented by Verizon. Just visit SNY.tv or download the NBC Sports app today for live streaming coverage of every SNY Mets game. Well, back from the disabled list, Anthony Swarzak will pitch for the Mets. He's on the disabled list twice this year, the most recent August 5th with right shoulder inflammation. Austin Dean, the first man to face him. Dean grounded out twice against DeGrom. JT Riddle, who came in on the double switch on deck, and then Rafael Ortega for the Marlins in the eighth. Fly ball toward the right field line. Demo on the move. That retires Dean all the way. So another one of those nights for Jacob DeGrom. Seven innings, two runs, three hits, two walks, nine strikeouts, 106 pitches. His ERA went up from 1.68 to 1.71, and unless the Mets rally, he will be under 500 in his one loss record this season. And the recurring nightmare a dink, a dunk, and a booming double by Brinson. He, hey, three hits in one inning. Three in a row. And that was it. And uh, no other hits in any other frame. JT Riddle up for the first time. He sat the last five games with a wrist injury. Well, I think if you talk to Jake, he will be kicking himself about the Brinson double ahead of the count of a two. Yeah, the other hits are just, you know, they, those are hits that happen. Soft contact. What can you do? Ortega on deck. But regardless of whether he gets a loss or no decision tonight, the fact is that Jake still has a half a run. Advantage in the ERA race with three starts left to make this season. His next outing will be a fascinating one. He's scheduled to pitch Sunday at Fenway Park, and presumably his mound opponent will be Chris Sale, who made his return from the disabled list tonight for Boston. That's drilled to deep right field by Riddle, and that ball is out of here. JT Riddle smacks one into the second deck and right. And the Marlins now lead three to one. Riddle's ninth home run of the year. Well, we've seen Riddle do this before. He had a walk-off home run against the Mets when he first came up to the big leagues a couple of years ago. And now he smacks one up into the Coca-Cola corner. Fastball down Broadway. Disable list for Swarzak, who hadn't given up a home run since June. Didn't overswing it. Come off the bench and hit a home run. How about that? And that makes the task of getting DeGrom off the hook that much more troublesome for the Mets. So you're saying DeGrom's going to start about uh, against Sale, who threw 26 pitches, only went one inning today so right. probably you know a three inning effort for him at the most for sale. Well remember that for much of the season Chris sale has been the front runner for American League Cy Young but he's been on the disabled list for a month he's only going to pitch a handful of innings down the stretch and it may be that Blake Snell has taken over the lead in that Cy Young. Right? Yeah Corey Kluber has not pitched well of late and got rocked yesterday in the start. Ortega skips out of the way and it's three and one. People's United Bank brings you tonight's starters. DeGrom had the one difficult inning in the fourth and that cost him. Reina gave up the home run to Conforto in the sixth and that's all he allowed over six and the third. And Ortega Hi. takes a fastball for a strike to a three and two. So Jake's got Boston, Washington, and Atlanta. 
Zellman. Daniel Zamora up in the bullpen. Now, because he's not making that last start, right? He lost it because of the rain out. It's popped up on the right side. And Flores waiting for it. Two out. The Mets can, you know, they can jigger him around if they want yeah. and give him an extra day here and there. I don't know if they're inclined to do that, if that's a good thing or a bad thing to pitch him every fifth day or to give him a six day once or twice coming down this last stretch. You could do that and then take a look at, at um, Corey Oswalt, uh, you know, and, and make almost like a six man uh, rotation. Well, the Mets are going to need two extra starters yeah. anyway, right? Oswalt took the start on Monday, and with the double header, they're going to need a starter Saturday in Boston, and then they're going to need another starter on Monday. Or is it Monday? I guess they won't need another no. starter Monday because they'll they'll work in the extra starter Saturday anyway. They've got those options with Degrom because he now has a few extra days to play with. Castro takes it low and it's two and zero. I guess my question would be if you were trying your best to get DeGrom the Cy Young, would you have him skip the start in Boston and pitch instead in Philadelphia mm. on Monday against a clearly weaker Philadelphia lineup compared to the powerful Red Sox? The Red Sox have the best lineup in the game. Right. So, I mean, you love the idea of DeGrom facing Sale at Fenway from a competitive standpoint, but if you're trying to get the guy the Cy Young, is he better off facing the Phillies instead? Mm. Now that you have the days to play with. Full count to Castro. Maybe he's earned the choice. Maybe. And I, I, I bet you he'll choose facing the Red Sox. I bet you so too. <laughs> Much like. <laughs> Ted Williams in that one year, the last game of the season, if you recall. Could have sat down the last game. He did not. What year was that year, you recall? 1941. Yep. Strike three called. Castro caught looking. Last 400 hitter in the majors. Williams did it the final day. Swarzak gives up a home run in his return from the DL. It's 3 1 Miami in the eighth. Here is Sierra comes in to play right field so the defensive platoon in for Miami. 
We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Adam Conley, who got the final two outs in the seventh, stays on to start the eighth with two left hand hitters due up. McNeil, Conforto, and then Flores for the Mets in the eighth. McNeil has been up three times and flying out all three. Started the night with a streak of reaching base in 22 consecutive starts. That could be on the line here. Need base runner, so he could take a strike here off Conley, who's known to be wild. To be wild. No. Oh. Drive around the majors presented by Cadillac. That's beat the Phillies first of the doubleheader. Spencer Kibu, but lost a tooth at a home run. And the Phillies have come from behind and lead the nightcap 5 3. A huge game for them to try and stay in the race. Cubs up 2 0 on the Brewers after Milwaukee beat them last night. They get within the game. Arizona and Colorado time 2 2 in the third at Coors Field. After the Rockies won last night to stretch their lead to a game and a half. And the Dodgers down 3 1 in the mm. ninth in Cincinnati in danger of falling to 0 6 against the Reds. McNeil pops one foul out of play 2 and 2. Can you believe that? Wow. Cincinnati Reds. That's why they play the games. They got really good pitching from Luis Castillo tonight. It was supposed to be the Reds' ace this year. The loan on the Granky contract comes due tonight. <laughs> they need him to, to win that game. He's given up a couple early. Two and two to McNeil with Conforto on deck. And Jeff bounces one down to first. That's oh, a fair ball for Dietrich. That skipped and the that's bag. That's the first out. That skimmed the top of the bag. Boy, it's a nightmare for a corner infielder. And you can see him get down on his knees here. It did. It rolled right over the top of the bag. He did the right thing, though. Got yeah. down in full block mode. That is. Uh, oh, it just got over it. Okay. Beautiful angle right there. Great job, guys. Two hands. <laughs> so one out now, Conforto. Conforto has had a really good night at the plate. He hit one to the warning track and left that was caught in the first. He doubled into the right field corner in the fourth, and he hit a laser beam over the fence in left center for his 24th home run of the sixth. Third straight game with a home run for Conforto. First time in his career he's done that. the home run the six is Conforto's 24th and this is what's good about this was that it was a pitch right down the middle the one you could pull which has been Michael's tendency this year and he just goes to show he's so strong this ballpark certainly can't hold him opposite field Ooh, two one change up from Conley lefty on lefty. Club record for most consecutive games on the home run, right? The most famous Mets home run hitter of all time, Woo! Richard Hidalgo. Oh, really? Hit homers in five straight games. That's right. Conforto takes call third strike. Conley's retired four in a row. Now a quick message from City. Hey, best. Conley's face four and retired for it. He'll stay in to face. Wilmer Flores is up for the first time. Flores took Frazier's spot in the batting order after Todd was ejected for continuing to argue after a couple of errant strike calls. Yeah, Hidalgo hit home runs in five straight games in 2004. Nobody else has done that in Mets history. But now Conforto's hit home runs in three straight. Hmm. I remember that. That was in the middle right of the season in the trade. Right. Off speed pitch by Conley and it's 0 and 2. Hidalgo is not a net for ball. It was a flash in the pan, I mean, we would say.
And Flores down on strikes to end the inning. So Conley with a dominating eighth. Strikes out a pair. And we go to the ninth with the Marlins up 3 1. All right, guys, Robert Gazelman will pitch the top of the ninth for New York. JT Realmuto leads off for the Marlins and takes a fastball for a strike. Last saw Gazelman Saturday, got the final four outs of the Mets' win against the Phillies. A little strange to see him with the Mets behind, especially with the doubleheader tomorrow. Realmuto's over three tonight, and he takes it wide, a ball and a strike. Rom went seven, a lot of two runs, three hits. Anthony Swarzak a lot of home run to JT Riddle in the eighth. And the Mets have had little on the offensive side outside of Michael Conforto's home run. Real Muto lines one at the center field for a base hit. So the Marlins have their fifth hit of the night. I was going to say, very rarely do the Mets ever give an over a collar to Real Muto. And they won't tonight. Just so good from gap to gap. So the Marlins have the leadoff man on, and here's Brian Anderson, who had an infield hit in the fourth. One for three on the night. His own one fires outside for ball one. In the bottom of the ninth, the Mets will have Nimmo, Smith, and Jackson coming up. Adam Conley shut him down for an inning and two thirds over the seventh and eighth. Drew Steckenrider looks like he's going to get the save chance for the Marlins. He's up in the bullpen. Coming up tonight on Geico Sports Night after the post game, the Jets still reveling in their Monday night win. The baseball action, and of course, remembering 9 11. Anderson hitting three and four in the order for Miami. Really, the two cornerstone players that they've got in this lineup, and both of them were high school kids in Oklahoma. Real Muto from 
Dell City, Oklahoma, and Anderson from Edmond, Oklahoma. Well, I wonder, are they close to Oklahoma City or Tulsa, Oklahoma? Those are the two big, big cities in Oklahoma. Ronnie and I have both been <laughs> in Tulsa, lived there, both enjoyed it. I don't know, but I'd have to guess that they both enjoyed the Sooners taking care of UCLA last night. Boy, Sooners uh, off to a rollicking start, 2-0. And he strokes one the other way. Coming on is Nimmo diving. Can't get it. It'll go by him. And Ray Muto is going to score. Around third and heading in. Anderson on his way to third with an RBI triple. And the Marlins tack on a run. It's now 4 1. Well, an ill advised dive by Nimmo really never had a chance for that. No. Ball. No, he did not. An A for effort, but really a poor judgment here. No chance. You can see the ball. Clearly in front. And this is setting up this inning for a put away right here. So it's now four to one, and the Mets have to bring the infield in with Anderson to third and nobody out. Derek Dietrich, the batter. So thank you very much for, for Mr. Anderson. It gets an RBI out of that. 59th RBI at his fourth triple of the year. That'll help this club who are last in slugging percentage, last in doubles, last in home runs. Last in walks, last in runs scored. Ooh. Dietrich lines one down the line for another extra base hit. That'll bring in Anderson. Dietrich pulls into second base with an RBI double, and that ball gets loose, but backed up. By McNeil, so Dietrich has to stay put. Three straight hits, produced two runs against Gazelman, and now it's five to one Miami. Well, he's trying to go for the cycle this inning. I'll tell you what, Miami has just been a team that always plays the Mets hard. They play them tough. Dietrich is a low ball hitter, like seeing a pull hitter. And where's this ball? Oh, around mid thigh, out over the plate. Dietrich comes out for a pinch runner. Yadiel Rivera running for him at second base. Now Lewis Brinson, who delivered the key blow in this game. A double off the center field fence that drove in two runs in the fourth. The Marlins have had the lead ever since. Those were the only two runs allowed by Jacob DeGrom over his seven innings tonight. The two Oklahoma guys both scored in this inning. Happy to know, Keith, that both Dell City and Edmond are right near Oklahoma City. Dell City's about 10 minutes west. Edmond's about 20 minutes north. McNeil checks the runner and then throws out Brinson for the first out of the inning. So now you've got your geography. Geography, right? Near okay. Oklahoma geography, right where it needs to be. In Oklahoma City was like all this flat land and all of a sudden it was like Emerald City. I remember taking the bus down from Tulsa. It was a two hour bus ride running. Mm. And there would be one that back in 1973 back then there was one skyscraper and it just stood out like it's looking for the wizard. Here's Peter O'Brien pinch hitting for the Marlins. Marlins got him in a deal with the Dodgers this summer. He's kicked around a lot in his Professional career started on the Yankees organization. And he fouls the first pitch back. Played some games for the Diamondbacks, I believe. Mm -hmm. Did some home runs for them. He's got tremendous power. Had a good minor league year this year. 30 home runs, 86 RBIs, I believe. Now 28 years old. He's had experience as a catcher, as a first baseman, as an outfielder. Let's 
Zellman struggling. The ball on a strike. Rivera, the pinch runner at second. Brian pinch hitting for the pitcher Conley, who did a terrific job in relief for Miami tonight. And Gazelman, of course, a fastball in for a strike one and two. Two coming, and the curveball mm. struck him out, and that's the second out of the inning. So O'Brien out on strikes, two away. Hey, parents, your child could join us in the booth. We'll call half an inning of a Mets game on SNY. Just go to SNY.tv/kidcaster and enter your child's video audition for a chance to win the 2018 SNY Kidcaster contest. Time's running out. When are we getting the Kidcaster on? I don't know. Last week of the season, I'm told. Hope it's not on a school night. Galloway breaks his bat, rolls it to third. McNeil against the speedy Galloway gets him to retire the side. That uh, bat exploded into about 10 pieces. Marlins add two and lead 5 1 with three outs to go. Rivera, who pinch ran, stays in the game at first base, and Drew Steckenrider will try and get the final three out. It's kind of been an up and down year for Steckenrider, but uh, 70 Ks is strong. 66 games. Brandon Nimmo leads off in the last of the ninth. Brandon's 0 for 2 in a walk tonight. Dominic Smith and Austin Jackson to follow. One out to left field. Galloway back a few strides onto the warning track to grab it. One out. <laughs> Doubleheader tomorrow with the rain out last night. First game starts at 4:10 p.m. Pre-game coverage at 3:30. Zach Wheeler will get the early game. Kind of be an eerie feeling to pitch that game, right? Because it's a rescheduled game. Four o'clock in the afternoon, there'll be virtually nobody in the ballpark, 
And here's Wheeler, who's been pitching so brilliantly. And I wonder how that feels to pitch again. I, I will tell you, it feels much better than pitching the 7 o'clock game because you don't know when that game's going to start. So at least with the 410, you can stay on your schedule. You can get your treatment, you get ready for the game, and you know when it's going to start, unless it was rain. But the 710, depending on how long the first game goes, you could be there in the locker room forever waiting. But does the lack of crowd noise, does that make a well, difference? Does it change the atmosphere for you? The way he's going right now, I would say absolutely not. But uh, I mean, it always helps when there's people in the crowd and there's a buzz and it gets you going. But question for you. Doubleheader. Yeah. You got the second game, which I would always, I would think everybody would want the first game. Right. If your team loses, is there a difference when your team wins the first game mm. or or loses the first game? Do you feel like okay, I got to step up. We lost. We can't get swept. No, I think I, either way, I know what you're saying. Yeah, you might feel that definitely that you you know you don't want to get swept, but you want to put the hammer down if you win the first game. You know what right. I mean? So that's you, true. In, in some ways, you go, boy, this this would be a great day if I can do what I'm supposed to do. Okay, so Vargas gets the second game for the Mets tomorrow. Uh, are you pitching the first game? I'm pitching the second game. I I, um, I don't have the gravitas in this booth to get the first game. Well, I get the second game. So Keith gets to to have his pregame routine <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. and, and be ready. Um, yes, I'll have my cup of coffee on time. <laughs> Dom Smith down on strikes, and the Mets are down to their final out of the night. Austin Jackson coming up. Well, the story of this game, Jacob DeGrom, another terrific start, 26 straight, allowing three runs or less, but as has so often happened this year, virtually no support from his offense. And barring a huge comeback with two out of the ninth, DeGrom will fall to eight and nine on the season with a 1.71 ERA. Almost unfathomable. But one pitch cost him tonight. The 0 2 pitch to Lewis Brinson that he hit off the center field fence to drive in two runs. The only two DeGrom gave up. I feel like for the last 20 starts that he's made, we've had just about the same open and just about the same close <laughs> when we're talking about Jake's game. I mean, imagine making 29 starts, having a 1.71 ERA and having eight wins. It's almost impossible for that yeah. to happen. And yet it has. Is about to. That's her down to their final strike. And Jackson takes up and in two and two. Not a safe situation for Stecken Rider with the Marlins tacking on two runs in the top of the night. That's mask knocked right off the face of Rail Muto. So do you each get a separate chair or do you do you share the same chair one in the first one of the second? I don't want any problems with chairs. Well, you know where I'll be. I'll be in Ronnie's spot. I'll be close to you. <laughs> Ronnie will move away. I'll move close. And I'll be in the press dining room uh, preparing and, and asking myself well, what is going on in here. So you'll be here for the first game, even though you're not working it, because you have to be. Yes. And there's ball four, and Jackson's on, and the Mets have a ninth inning base runner. So my question to Keith would be: Is where will you be for the second game? I will be in the car before you guys uh, do the opener. <laughs> <laughs> so that means you get the first few innings with Howie and Josh. And when you get home. Yeah, right, right, right. On the radio, right. Right. And then when you get home, will you be turning the game on or will you have. I'm going to probably get a little late dinner. It's a four o'clock start, probably end around seven. Uh, let me see, to do, do, do the math, I'll probably get home around nine. You probably get some late rush hour traffic with that seven o'clock finish. You might want to stick around for a couple hours, you know? 
catch, you know, catch yeah, but the I beginning of the game. I'm going to need dinner. I'll, no, I know what I'll do. I'll go to my local restaurant where the game, they always have the Met game on TV. Lewecki pops one foul. That'll go out of play. And again, the Mets are down to their final strike. I always like to know about your plans, Keith. You know. Well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a creature of habit, just like you, Gare. Yeah, but I'm here for all the games. Well, you got to talk to your agent about that. <laughs> I'm like a Roscoe. I'm saving both ends of the double head. <laughs> 0 2 to Plowacki. And he mm. fouls one back. Jackson's been running on each of the first three pitches. He's had to return each time. He's getting the sprints in. Mm. Steck and Ryder trying to put a close to this one. Jack Reinheimer is on deck to pinch hit if Plowecki can keep it going. And now Jackson takes second on defensive indifference. <laughs> he said I made it. It took him four tries. One two to Plowecki. And he drives one to deep left field. Forget that. That ball's way out of here. Kevin Fulecki with a 2 1 homer in sixth of the year. And the Mets draw closer. It's now 5 to 3. So just when it appeared the end was near, Jackson draws a walk. Fulecki hits a 2 1 homer, and now the Mets are back within two. Ball down in the strike zone and down the pipe. And Polecki on it. Right down the middle, down in the strike zone. Well, the Mets now need just one more base runner to get the tying run to the plate. Jack Reinheimer pinch hitting and takes a fastball for a strike. Mets were twice down to their final strike. Jackson and Plowecki both keep them alive. And now Reinheimer lays off, and it's out of the strike zone, one and one. If Reinheimer can get on, then Rosario would come up as the tying run. Rally hats in order. Reinheimer slashes one foul, and for the third time, the Mets are down to their final strike. One, two. Hey, holds the swing. Two and two. SNY Super Slow Motion is brought to you by Mercedes Benz Tri State Dealers. Mercedes Benz, the best. Or nothing. Two two to Reinheimer. Oh, up and in full count. So Stecken Ryder got two quick outs. Having trouble sealing the deal. Nobody up in the Marlins bullpen. Three and two coming to Reinheimer. And he walked oh, him, and oh. now the Mets will get the tying run to the plate. How about that? Two out and nobody on. A walk, a two-run homer, and another walk. And now Rosario will come up as the tying run. And Chuck Hernandez, the Marlins pitching coach, wants to know what the heck is going on with second right. Well, you know, this has been part of the problem for the Marlins all year is that even when they've gotten ahead late in games they've had a hard time closing it out. Second Riders got some good stuff but uh, made a couple of mistakes here. A couple of walks and mm. a home run. I think I said Chuck Hernandez and then Juan Nieves, Marlins pitching coach. All those pitching coaches run together after a while. <laughs> now Barraclaw quickly to work in the Marlins bullpen. He had been up in the seventh and now getting up again. Well, with all the lack of support that DeGrom has gotten this year, can they get him off the hook in the bottom of the ninth? Down four runs and down to their final out. Rosario's 0 for 4 tonight. 
And he hits a broken back rider to second. Caster with a flip. And the Marlins hang on to win it. And Jacob DeGrom does indeed fall under 500 for the season, despite the best ERA in the world at 1.71. Another fine outing for DeGrom. What a loss for him and a loss for the Mets in the opening game of this series as the Marlins win it 5 to 3. Well, just a shame he had one inning uh, where he wasn't perfect, gave up three runs, three hits in a row. First one an infield hit, second one just a dunker to the left, but then made a mistake though to, to Prince. Game summary presented by Fios by Verizon. The two run double by Lewis Brinson in the fourth inning, the big hit for Miami. That put them in the lead to stay and cost DeGrom his ninth loss of the season. 5-3 the final. We'll be back in a moment.